A unanimous Supreme Court ruling says police cannot search the cell phones of people they arrest without a warrant. The justices say cell phones can't hold private information, and unlike anything else police may find on a suspect. Police must have probable cause and get a search warrant before looking at the contents of a cell phone. The only exception is if officers fear for their safety or for the lives of others. Dallas Attorney Pete Schulte joins us tonight. We appreciate you being here. Pete is also a former McKinney police officer, so you can look at this from both sides, all, all perspectives. This is really unprecedented. It is. I mean, this is a unanimous decision by yeah. the United States Supreme Court. As you probably saw, the justices that were appointed recently were from George W. Bush. So they're very conservative justices, but they, they ruled on the side of the citizens in this case, not with the side of the police, which shocked many. An instant, too, this ruling. Yeah, basically any cases that aren't final. So if there's a case that's pending in any court that maybe the arrest was three or four months ago and a police officer searched a phone after the arrest and they got evidence from that, this now is in effect. So a defense attorney could file a motion to suppress that evidence based on this ruling because it's constitutional in nature. Right. So what do you think is behind the movement to get so involved in our everyday lives? Well, I'll tell you, it's interesting because back in the 1960s and 1970s was the last time that we saw the United States Supreme Court really get into the Fourth Amendment realm, and that's obviously the amendment that deals with searches and seizures. Right. So anytime citizens deal with the police, now we have these technological advances where everybody's phone can have their entire snapshot of their life in the palm of their hand, where 50 years ago you'd have to have 50 boxes of documents with you right. to have the same amount of evidence that's in your cell phone. So the ACLU, they are saying, listen, this is great, it's revolutionary, it's protecting everybody. It really is, because the ruling doesn't prevent police officers from seizing a cell phone that they believe have evidence on it. It's still, they're still able to do that, just like if a police officer goes to a house and they want to search it, but they don't have a warrant yet, they can, they can control the house, get everybody out, secure it, then get a warrant. Same thing with a cell phone. If they believe that there's probable cause to go to a judge to get a court order to search it, they can seize it and hold on to it for a reasonable amount of time. Does it in any way make their job more difficult because they can't do it instantly? Well, I'll tell you, the Supreme Court in California in 2009, I'm sorry, 2011, mm -hmm. stated that it was legal for police officers to do this incident to arrest, to go through anybody's phone right. from start to finish. And a lot of times it was a view that was abused. So I think what happened in that regard was, is when the police officers abused that, they went too far. And so in this particular case, they said, look, if you need the evidence, we're not talking about if there is a kidnapping situation. Because right. then they can, in any sort of immediate danger to the officers or to the public... Right. I mean, the, the, the opinion talked about a bomb being detonated. I mean, if there's a somebody thinks that a cell phone is going to be used to detonate a bomb, then the police, they're going to know what we call exigent circumstances. Mm -hmm. That's the legal term. Police are going to know when those circumstances exist where they're not going to have to get a warrant. It's rare, but they're going to know. All right. So a couple of scenarios. So uh, an officer is arresting somebody. That you can, they can look in their pockets. They can take the contents out of their pockets or whatever. So they take all that stuff out. And in that pocket, they find a cell phone. That's where it's got to stop? Correct. Now, I, I will tell you that there's going to be police officers out there that are still going to look through a phone, especially if it doesn't have a passcode. Well, they're not going to want to hear that if they're not supposed to Well, they're not supposed that. to. But so basically what will happen is, is that if an officer does do that now in violation of the constitutional rights mm -hmm. of the defendant, they're not going to be able to use that evidence against them. So one of the things I always tell people is, you know, as a defense attorney, as a former police officer, I believe in the Constitution, the constitutional mm -hmm. rights. Keep a passcode on your phone. You don't have to consent to a search of your cell phone when the police ask. If the police want to search your phone and they feel like they get a neutral judge to issue the order, that's what they should do. You don't have to give consent to let the police All search right, your so phone. All right, so they pull you over, they say, I want to see your phone, you can just say... Well, I'll give you an example, texting while driving. Well, that's, I was yeah. thinking about that because wouldn't they want to immediately look at your phone if they pull you over for distracted driving or texting and driving, whatever it might be, to look to see if you were indeed texting? It's very interesting, but it goes back to what's reasonable under those circumstances. Texting while driving is a fine-only offense, so it's a citation. Are you really going to in infringe on somebody's constitutional rights to try to get that evidence. Mm -hmm. I guarantee a judge more than likely would not sign a search warrant to try to get evidence of sure. somebody's texting while driving. Well, you know, I, I think given this and other, some of the other examples that you said, it seems like the Supreme Court is really kind of catching up with technology and where, you know, I mean, like you said, all of our information is right there in our hand on our smartphone. It's very interesting that you mentioned that. I mean, these cases originated back, one, one of them, there were two cases that were heard at the same time. One of them was in 2007 dealing with a flip phone. Those don't even exist right. much anymore. Right. One was 2009, but was very interesting in this opinion when you get towards the end, Chief Justice Roberts really talks about and gives a direction to law enforcement is technological advances are going to come. You need to go with a search warrant 
not try to go through an exception right. with the Fourth Amendment requirement. And they were very clear with that because the courts can't keep up with technology. So it's interesting. I think you're going to see a lot more police departments issuing policies saying, if there isn't a rule or a case that says you can do it, go get a warrant. It's right. easy now. Even judges, like they said in the opinion, have iPads and they can receive affidavits and do things. And, and the Supreme Court said within 15 minutes, right. get a search warrant, which you could never do that, you know, 10 years ago. Right. It's all changing. Pete, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. As Thanks always, for having me again. Appreciate you coming in. Thank you.